Hello, welcome to Sunday class. We have been discussing on Shakespeare and his works and today the class deals with the four great tragedies of Shakespeare that is Hamlet, Othello, King Lear and Macbeth. H O K M. They present a wide range of intense emotions, issues situated to the mature years of human life. We can see different kinds of flaws in these characters. In Hamlet, we can see there's a search for meaning in life's dilemmas. He's been procrastinating from what he was, uh, you know, from his duties, what he was expected to do for his uh, father. Then Othello, we can see there is a sexual jealousy. It, which was, you know, injected by Iago. Then in King Lear, there is an aging and, you know, generational conflict can be seen there. In Macbeth, there is ambition and power. So first of all, Hamlet, 1601. It is a form uh, of that of a scenic and revenge tragedy. It is Shakespeare's longest play. The sources are Ur Hamlet, which was composed during 1588, apparently derived from Belfort's collection Histories Tragics, which was published during 1580. Belfort's story is retold from Saxo Grammaticus's Danish story in 1514. So coming to the plot of uh, Hamlet, King Hamlet of Denmark has died. His brother Claudius has come to the throne and has married his widow queen Gertrude. Informed by his friend Horatio, Prince Hamlet meets his father's ghost who tells that Claudius poisoned him. Hamlet swears revenge but needs to verify Claudius' guilt and his mother's innocence. Hamlet persuades a company of actors to revive an old play, The Murder of Gonzago, that parallels the story of Claudius. Hamlet is now behaving strangely. He feigns madness, rejects his sweetheart Ophelia and Ophelia's father, Polonius, the court chamberlain, is convinced that he is mad. Claudius' guilt is revealed at the play within the play, which Hamlet calls the mouse trap. Claudius orders Hamlet to go to England with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, where he would be treacherously killed. Hamlet escapes and Clo uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are killed instead. Hamlet encounters Gertrude in her chamber and stabs to death the eavesdropping Polonius. To avenge his father's death, Polonius's son, Laetrus, returns to Denmark and finds his sister Ophelia mad. Claudius plods with Laetrus to kill Hamlet in a duel by means of poison-tipped sword. Ophelia's death by drowning strengthens Laetrus. Resolve. The duel takes place culminating in the death of Gertrude, Laetrus, Claudius and Hamlet. Schlegel and uh, later Coleridge calls Hamlet a tragedy of thought or a tragedy of reflection. A.C. Broadley calls Hamlet a tragedy of moral idealism. Now let's see the opinions of critics on Hamlet. Um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge considered Hamlet to be an intellectual who thinks too much. A.C. Broadley explained Hamlet's delay as a result of deep melancholy which grew out of his disappointment in his mother. T.S. Eliot calls Hamlet an artistic failure for the lack of an objective correlative and said it is a Mona Lisa of literature. Sigmund Freud explained Hamlet's procrastination in terms of the Oedipal complex, a view endorsed by Ernest Johns. 
Next, Othello, 1602-1604. It is subtitled The Moor of Venice. It's a tragedy of passion. Coleridge applied the term motiveless malignity to the character Iago. And the major source of Othello is Cynthia's Hecatomythy. Then coming to the plot, Othello, a trusted general of the Venetian army, has secretly married Desdemona, daughter of the Venetian senator Brabantio. Othello's ensign Iago, whom Othello believes to be honest, is scheming against him mainly because of uh, Othello chose Cassio as his lieutenant in preference to Iago. At Iago's prompting, Rodrigo, Desdemona's foolish sweeter, reports the marriage to Brabantio. Though Brabantio demands of the law's arrest, he has to accept the wholeheartedness of Desdemona's love when she appears before the Senate. There is an impending Turkish attack on Cyprus and Othello lives immediately with Desdemona, Iago, Cassio and Rodrigo. In Cyprus, Iago contrives to discredit Cassio, whom Othello dismisses. Iago advises Cassio to appeal Desdemona and implants in Othello's mind a suspicion regarding Desdemona and Cassio. Her support of Cassio along with Iago's, uh, you know, inundos deepens Othello's suspicion. Desdemona accidentally drops a handkerchief, Othello's first token of love, which Iago brings to Cassio's hand. Cassio gives a handkerchief to his mistress Bianca. Bianca's possession of the handkerchief convinces Othello of Desdemona's infidelity. He humiliates Desdemona in public to the dismay of Iago's wife, Emilia. Iago urges Rodrigo to kill Cassio, but Rodrigo manages only to wound him. Iago kills Rodrigo to ensure silence, and Othello kills Desdemona in her bedchamber. In the presence of Venetian representatives, Emilia reveals Iago's guilt. Iago kills her and then is wounded by Othello and tries to escape. The remorseful Othello stabs himself and Iago is captured. According to A.C. Bradley, Othello is a most painful, exciting and the most terrible of all the tragedies. Time is an important feature in Othello. The time taken for the action is not more than two days. The play, however, produces the impression that several weeks have passed. So this is called double time scheme. This means that two time schemes are simultaneously at work in the play. The real time and the experienced time. Okay, now we move on to King Lear, which is dated from uh, 1604 to 1605 and performed at court um, in 1606. Noham Tate famously produced the play with a happy ending, putting Edgar in the place of the King of France as Cordelia's lover. Okay, now let's see the plot. The aged British King Lear decides to share his kingdom between his three daughters and spent his remaining years at their courts. His youngest and his favorite daughter Cordelia refuses to earn her share by joining Goniril and Regan in exaggerated declaration of love for their father. The angry king divides the kingdom between his two eldest daughters and Cordelia is married without dowry by the king of France. The king meets with hostility at his eldest daughter's courts. He runs against them and rages out into a storm accompanied by his fool and the loyal Duke of Kent. Tried beyond his strength, he goes mad. Goniril, Regan and Regan's husband, the Duke of Cornwall, hear that the French army has landed at Dover and Lear would meet Cordelia there. 
the duke of gloucester who assisted lear by keeping the french invasion secret is blinded and tortured by cornwall with the help of gloucester's illegitimate son edmund who is also the lover of the villainous sisters mad lear and blind gloucester meet near dover the french army is defeated in dover and lear and cordelia are arrested edmund gives orders that he should be put to death but is himself killed by his legitimate brother edgar who had been wrongly exiled by gloucester and had cared for lear and saved gloucester from accidental death in the heath disguised as a lunatic tom o betlam edmund makes a dying confession but cordelia has already hanged by then lear brings his daughter's corpse at the stage and dies assertive that she is still alive According to A.C. Bradley, the play has a two-fold character. To lovers of the Shakespeare, this is his greatest play. And to general theatre-goers, this is not a great success. The sources of King Lear um, is an earlier anonymous play, King Lear, L-E-I-R, okay, which was composed in 1590. Then Hollinshed's Chronicles. And the subplot is from... Uh, Philip Sidney's Arcadia. The subplot is uh, the Gloucester's blinding. You know, uh, Edward's exile as Mad Tom, Regan and Goneril's uh, sexual rivalry. The subplot is more complex and well-defined than main plot. The next is Macbeth, 1606. We have discussed the Macbeth in detail uh, in the Kerala PSC HSA English classes. You can you will get two special videos on Macbeth. You can check out there. But we will still go with um, you know uh, the summary of the play. So Macbeth is the last of the tragedies, and the style is completely you know formed here. The source is Hollinshed's um, Chronicles of England. Scotland and Ireland then uh, and also George Buchanan's Latin History of Scotland Reginald Scott's Discovery of Witchcraft and King James first uh, Diamondology Thomas Middleton is believed to have adapted and abridged the original play written by Shakespeare it was performed before James first who was believed to have been a descendant of Bango uh, the play shows Shakespeare's close relationship with the king. So the plot is that Scotland is stormed by rebellion, which is effectively resisted by the generals Macbeth and Bango. On their way back to King Duncan's court, the generals meet three witches who prophesy that Macbeth will become Thane of Cawdor and King of Scotland. And that Bango's sons will be kings. Almost at once, Macbeth learns that he has been proclaimed Thane of Cawdor, which makes him believe in the witch's prophecy. King Duncan intends to visit Macbeth's castle at Inverness, and Lady Macbeth overrides her husband's hesitation and makes him kill the king. Suspicion falls on Duncan's sons Malcolm and Donald Bain, who flee from Scotland. Macbeth is now king but feels insecure. Macbeth sends murderers to kill Bango and his sons but the sons escape. Macbeth is weighed down by guilt and sleeplessness but the witches assure him that he will not be defeated until Burnham Wood comes to um, Dunsinanian castle and that no man born of woman can harm him. Macduff, the powerful Thane of Fifth, joins Malcolm in England against Macbeth and Macbeth slaughters Macduff's family. A distraught Lady Macbeth walks and talks in her sleep, betraying the secret of Duncan's murder. Malcolm's soldiers cut branches from Burnham Wood to camouflage their attack. Macbeth also gets word that Lady Macbeth is dead. Macbeth is killed by Macduff, who
who was not from his mother's womb and malcolm becomes a king of scotland so that's all about the great tragedies of shakespeare hamlet othello king lear and macbeth in the next class we will discuss about shakespeare's roman plays thank you